a show about the importance of Oklahoma Indian languages and the people who are fighting to preserve them. My guests tonight are two Caddo friends, Mary Lou Davis and Ranlett Edmonds. We all first met in a Caddo class in Gracemont in 1992. Uh, Mary Lou, first of all, uh, served on the Caddo Tribal Council for two years and now serves on the Heritage Committee um, and on the Native American Council for the Federal Executive Board. She helped start a Caddo class in Oklahoma City and she's also an accomplished potter. We see examples of her work here, which we'll look at in more detail later. Uh, and she often works Caddo designs into her work. And she's also a 50-year alumna of Zeta Tau Alpha sorority. <laughs> so welcome, Mary Lou. Thank you. Uh, Randlett is one of the foremost Caddo singers. Uh, he's a native speaker of Caddo and a very experienced Caddo language teacher. Uh, he recently recorded some songs for a tape that came out last fall uh, produced by the State Arts Council called Remaining Ourselves, Music and Tribal Memory. There's a nice book that goes with it as well. Uh, songs of many tribes, but Randlett has a couple of songs on there. Um, first of all, Randlett, could you teach us how to greet someone in Caddo? What do you say for hello? You say quahat. 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 And, and if uh, I say quahat to you, what do you say back? Sinasa uh, anta, which means, uh, are you okay too? Uh -huh. So quahat really is saying, are you okay? Yeah. And you can just answer, uh, hey, yes. Yeah, but then yes. the person could say back, sinasa anta, yeah, are you okay too? Yeah, are you okay too? Now, then there's one more little wrinkle in this, which is sinasa anta is what you would say back to me. Yeah. But uh, if you're talking to two people, how do you say that same thing? Sinasa uh, anta. And if you're talking to three or more, it's different again. Sina sat wawa. Okay. So thank you. <laughs> we said a mouthful, and all we said so far is hello. But I love that about Caddo. Um, I'd like, uh, I usually ask my guests to show where their languages are spoken. We have a map here of the state. And uh, if you could just sort of tell us or show us generally where the Caddo language is spoken and where most Caddo people live. Uh, yeah. Around in this area, north of Inadarko. Uh -huh north of Gracemont, uh, around the Fort Cobb area, around the Culver area. Mm -hmm. And Binger, Binger right? circle Binger. there, yeah, around the Binger, right. Binger, Oklahoma. Okay. Binger is here. Right. Okay. Thank you. And um, I know you and Brian Levy have been working on trying to figure out exactly how many Caddo speakers remain. There aren't very many. Uh, I think you came up with a number of 30 or so, right? Well, we had... Uh, 80 at one time, but there's not that many anymore. Mm -hmm. It's probably 50. Maybe as many as 50? 50, yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the numbers have gotten very low, I understand. Yes, yeah. um, so you need to really fight for your language at mm -hmm. this point, like yes. so many people and so many tribes do. Um, let's talk a little bit about each of your personal history as it relates to language. Mary Lou, you didn't learn Caddo as a child, right? No. Uh, my grandmother, um, my Caddo grandmother grew up in uh, boarding schools, you know, and this was in the 1800s, and uh -huh. they were not allowed to speak their native tongue, you know, and right. so then when she married and her kids grew up, she didn't think it was right for them to speak right. Caddo, so although my dad did know some Caddo, he didn't learn, they didn't speak fluently in the house, and then uh -huh. kind of just disappeared. He taught us a few words, you know, we could count, sure. uh -huh. and we could say things like that, but... Well, when did you first decide as an adult that you wanted to take up and pursue the study of Caddo language? <laughs> well, I'm not really sure, but when the classes, you know, at Grace Month started, I really th I had had the desire to learn, and I thought, gee, I really ought to learn this. And so when we started down there is when I really felt a need to do it. So you started in an organized way about the same time I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you progressed a lot faster oh, than I did. I was about to say the opposite. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Now, Randlett, I know you've spoken Caddo all your life, right? Well, I, I knew it, but I never spoke Caddo for 78 years. Uh, when they when we started teaching it, I uh, came out with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know why I never talked it. Maybe because we weren't allowed to talk it in school. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I didn't have anyone to talk to. Mm. That's a couple of reasons there. Right. I, I didn't talk Caddo till I had to teach it, so yeah. I had to talk it then. I didn't realize it had, that you had been using it so little for that long period of time. Yeah. I should mention that uh, this Caddo language class that started in the fall of 1992 that we were all to be involved in, Randlett was one of our main teachers, Randlett and uh, Clara mm. Brown. 
were our main models for how to speak Caddo. The rest of us struggled as best we could to figure out mm -hmm. how to try to do the same thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, when did you first learn English? Did you also know that all your life, or well, did you I learn it a little later? Well, I knew later? that. My, my, my mother taught uh, English, okay. and of course she went to um, school at um, St. Patrick's and probably Riverside and Shalako, mm -hmm. all those schools. Mm -hmm. She learned how to read and write and mm -hmm. talk, talk the language. Yeah. So I talked to, I, I, I talked in English, I started talking English. Uh, also at a very early age. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mary Lou, uh, um, would you like to show us some of your work before we oh, okay. go further? We'd love to see some of your pottery. <coughs> some of these uh, designs, especially, I, these are kind of special to me because I dig the clay you know, and make them out oh. of really red earth and uh, Native American clay. And the designs are from the spiral mounds, either from the uh, shell carvings or from the uh, uh, pottery shards that we found around there. And the cross on here means either the four winds or the uh, four directions mm -hmm. or the four stages in life. The circle part always is the sun. This one particularly shows it more. And this is kind of neat. This is anthropologists name these things. And this is called mm -hmm. the weeping eye warrior uh -huh. design. Uh, Maybe I can help you hold a couple of these up and we can get a shot of them. This one's the weeping eye. Uh-huh. And <clears throat> this is a, huh? a raccoon. <laughs> I have one of these at home. I love this one. It's a little sad looking, really. I know <laughs> well, that's what John calls this the roadkill. Roadkill. <laughs> he thinks it looks just... Um, <laughs> but, uh, and you were telling me a while ago they have some notions about why all of these raccoons were hanging around. Or, right, or they, depicted they're or on the, the shell carvings mm -hmm. and they think maybe that it was a clan. I mean, they don't know for sure. And mm -hmm. it's something Symbol that the, of a clan, the, the, uh, the Oot clan. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> the Oot. Yeah. And, and, and you've got this the, hand. The here. hand is actually a, a, the palm. And there were like this and the eye, the, those that have this eye in them, it, like the all-seeing eye or the spirit yeah. of the leader or something and mm. up, above that was the symbol apparently for that yeah. um, well, and I just took nice. one of them these are not these are kind of like my interpretations of the design yeah. nobody knows way. for sure in great detail no what nobody knows the, the original artist is the only one that knows why they did this design mm -hmm. and here's the spider and then the circle of life there mm -hmm. so I made this turtle for John for Christmas, <laughs> and that. it has the sun sign in the uh, four directions in mm -hmm. the, on it. And that's what I do a lot of times is use the spiral mounds. This is high fire, you know, mm -hmm. on uh, pottery, and because I think they're neat designs. Yeah. And this is um, a high fire Maybe plate that has a, a bit. platter. Mm -hmm. And this is the circle of life, and then the palm and then the circle in there on different... Uh, this is hefty. <laughs> it's heavy. It's, it's really it's, nice. It's stoneware and, uh, yeah. and it's big. Very nice. Now the other pots over there are... About this one here. Okay. Those are burnished low fire. That's They're made the native way with coil and paddle and uh, then burnished. <clears throat> and then I copied the other one directly from a, a Caddo pot that was in the museum mm -hmm. and that's a Caddo design and the shape of I love that of the design pot. that runs around uh -huh. the top. Do you have any ideas what this one means, this kind of I really don't know. Uh, I don't know what the, the mm -hmm. meaning is, but they seem to like that curve and and like I say, probably the original artist put it on there for some reason and we'll yeah. never know. Yeah. It's very attractive. I really uh. like this pot. I think it's my favorite of everything you have here right now. I really love that one. Um, let me also ask you about what you're wearing now. We, we have to point out we made a little adjustment in your dress <laughs> this evening because you normally wear a, a, an all-white apron. I have this all-white apron that goes over my dress. Um, this is a traditional Caddo dress that we wear for dances and uh -huh. uh, for when we do the Caddo traditional dances. When we do the turkey dance and when we dance in the afternoon, we wear this on our, it's a hair piece called a dust toe. And, uh, but it's not to be worn after dark, so. Mm -hmm. 
We always have well, to thank do. you for bringing it, showing it to us anyway. And, <laughs> we always and, have to do uh, the turkey dance I should explain dinner. about the white apron. It's just that it's difficult to adjust the cameras properly with that. It's, you know, yeah, so we took Solid the white. Um, so normally you would have your white I apron would, on as well. It's part of the dress. And part. what are, maybe Randlett, you could help us. I know there are so many different caddo dances and songs mm -hmm. that go with them. Maybe between the two of you, you all could just name some of the more distinctive caddo dances, and uh, most of which have songs that go with them. Besides the turkey dance. Turkey dance. There's the fish dance, the bear dance. They're all mostly all named after animals, aren't they, Randlett? I don't Sounds know. Sounds like, yeah. Huh? Well, there's yeah. women's dances. Well, of course, there's dances. Nutty, the ocean, the women's dances. <laughs> the women's dances. I don't know, we're, at, we're animals, I guess. Uh, uh, what else do we The drum well, dance. Duck dance. So duck dance. Keep, they're but just like, seem like alligator dance. Mm -hmm. Any animal almost, there we have a dance for it. Um, oh. huh. but, and there's a drum dance and the flag. Yeah, we can do about 20 different dances. Uh, yeah. We do all the, most of the powwow dances mm -hmm. beside our own. Uh -huh. And uh, one of the things I really like about going to Caddo dances is that they have so many different dances that mm -hmm. other tribes don't mm -hmm. do. And of course, you do stomp dances sometimes too, which some other tribes do do. I think we and pick that up from, from the other tribes, though, don't you, Randlett? Mm -hmm. They always say uh, the Caddos don't have any dances there, all, all came from other tribes. Well. No, nobody knows. They yeah, don't. It's These hard, are hard to know what the history is if you go <laughs> back far enough, but it impresses me today. It's very distinctive. Uh -huh. It is. The Caddos don't have powwows like other tribes have powwows and invite and they have all the big mm -hmm. feather dancers and everything come in. The Caddos yeah. only have traditional dances and have right. annual dances and dances on weekends and things. And right. Randlett, maybe this would be a good time for you, you to give us an example of some Caddo music. You uh, had told me that you would uh, like to sing us some songs. These are songs that uh, in English people often call them ghost dance songs, but mm -hmm. I know there, are, there are, uh, there's another way to refer to these in Caddo. What would you call these songs in Caddo? Well, Kasikani would be um, to hold hands and dance, mm -hmm. uh, or Nanisana, which in Arapaho means uh, uh, our children. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason why they called it ghost dance was uh, when you dance the ghost dance, you you uh, got the Holy Ghost, and uh, you'd, you'd keel over while you were dancing, mm -hmm. just fall in the faint. Mm -hmm. That's that's where the ghost dance came from. Mm -hmm. well, the, the name of the ghost dance, and um, so I I uh, uh, sing uh, one of our uh, cattle ghost dance songs. Uh, also, it was, uh, the ghost dance was more religious at one mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I sing this song, it's uh, telling about cattles. Uh, when we die, we'll go to the big home. That's, mm -hmm. what, that's, that's what we're saying. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Ah, uh -huh. 
Now this next song will be about um, uh, uh, the raven and the buffalo. Uh, it's still a ghost dance song, but um, doesn't really sound sound like it. But uh, the um, the song goes if when if you see a raven up on the hill and the, you climb up there and you get on, up on top of it, you look down. You looking down, you'll see a buffalo. That's what this song says. sing us 200 more if you wanted to, <laughs> if we had enough time on the show. Let's talk just a little bit about the language classes now. Um, we were all in this class that met out in Gracemont, and then it was after that, wasn't it, Mary Lou, that you mm -hmm. got a class started up, up in Oklahoma City? In Oklahoma City, there was a great deal of interest, you know, for, to learn the Caddo language among the, the... I was district representative then among the people that are, you know, serving uh -huh. in the district there. So, Ramit was our teacher, and I facilitated the classes, and we... Uh, held them out at the Red Earth Center in their edge in their learning center and we took the language lessons that we had mm -hmm. from uh, Gracemont and mimeographed them off and they were mostly words we didn't have mm -hmm. uh, you know phrases very many phrases mm -hmm. but then we had uh, Ranit say the word and we did cassette tapes mm -hmm. and then he did English and Caddo and English and then we gave gave everybody a Xerox copy of the lessons and then the tape so that they could read the lessons and hear the tape and hear the words and then we met about every other Sunday didn't we out there for oh a long time until mm. I think we got something happened and we couldn't do it anymore yeah. for a while. I think I just said joined you in your class once or twice one uh -huh. of the things that impressed me about it was that you had a broad age range we did we had tiny some, kids uh -huh. to older adults we met sometimes over at my house because Randlett wanted to teach us songs. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got out on the patio and built a fire <laughs> in the big kettle I had out there and danced around and sang the songs that Randlett was teaching us, the women's songs and these mm -hmm. ghost songs. We, we had a real good time doing that. And I think kind of that's a way you can learn languages. Is oh, I think it helps immensely. By singing. And yes. if I could sing everything, I could <laughs> learn a lot faster. <laughs> Yeah. Um, one other thing I wanted to ask you about the classes has to do with the writing system. In, the, in Gracemont, we use this writing system invented by Wallace Chafe, who is a professor at UC Santa Barbara. And it made sense to me as a linguist. It's a little, it takes a little getting used to, though, when you're used to just spelling things the English way. How did that work for you? Well, uh, it worked for us fine in Oklahoma City because nobody knew, had any other thoughts about it, you know. Mm -hmm. But with some of the elders down in Binger, we found that they really didn't like doing that mm -hmm. alphabet. They wouldn't write everything out phonetically because mm -hmm. they could not uh, learn that alphabet or did not want to, I suppose, yeah. or something. And so it was kind of a hindrance with some yeah. of, uh, classes with yeah. the elders because they really were not attuned to it. Yeah. 
like in a lot of cases, I think some people find it a useful tool, and those who don't should ignore yeah, it. Yeah, ram it, you know, and I get along fine with it. Without it, fine. Or if they already speak the language uh -huh. and don't feel they need it, fine. And yes. it's just like learning the ABCs. Once you learn them and you see Once that you word, it, then you know exactly. that exactly. A U is O instead yes. of <laughs> R or something. Right. Randlick, the, uh, the, we only have a few minutes left. Could I ask you to sing that turkey dance song that we mentioned um, uh -oh. before we close out? Oh, another uh, turkey yeah. dance. What, weren't you going to sing the one about uh, the yeah. Tonkawa? Tonkawa. Oh, okay. The one um, about beating him with the stone. Okay, this this song is about uh, uh, women. Uh, uh, the singer is uh, telling the women to listen to this song. And um, uh, the this, this song goes... Um, when he uh, chased him, that was good. When he caught up with him, that was good. Uh, he he thought uh, they wouldn't beat him, uh, uh, so he went and hooped. And uh, but they went ahead and beat him with a rock. That's what <laughs> that's what the song says. Nice, pleasant song. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, no, I can't. I can't think of it. Let's see. Yeah. Dancing and songs is so important to the Caddos. And on our flag, you know, we have the song. Um, I can't think of the song. <laughs> and I didn't bring it. Let's sing a, another. Uh, I'll sing. I'll sing. A, no, uh, what? And I'll sing with you. Ghost I'll man. sing another ghost dance song, uh, which says. Uh, no, we are. Please okay. go ahead. Okay, I'm yep. just saying, if we run out of time, we may just have to wave goodbye as we finish the show. Okay, please Let's go ahead. Did we no, run we out of time? No, we didn't yet. We would love to finish with your song. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Uh, this song uh, my grandfather uh, composed, and he's saying, uh, uh, have you already eaten the seed corn? That's why I'm um, hanging around. Ah yes, your coming and um, it's been a real pleasure sharing the songs and the uh, and the discussion of the language as well um, let me ask you before we close um, about one more thing um, have you encountered uh, well I know you have encountered this attitude we all have of some uh, some of the elders who feel like it's just maybe it's too late and it's so hard for the younger people to learn the language Randall, I think you've expressed this uh, discouragement to me once or twice. What can we do about that? What can we do to kind of encourage people to learn, to be able to learn and to stick with it? I know it's tough sometimes. Classes will start and then stop. 
Do you have any suggestions for us? <laughs> <laughs> I know I you guess, seem to uh, like that rabbit guess, with the battery. You keep on going I and guess going. Just teaching the younger, younger. The youngest, yeah, yeah. get the youngest yeah. students possible. I think that's a very yeah, important idea. Uh, now, Rand and I were teaching a class one day down yeah. in Binger down there, and these two little kids just uh -huh. picked yeah. up words that we were just trying, struggling to teach the adults, and they'd run around the table and say the word and run away. They like about that right? big. It's just easy as could just be for them. Making fun of everybody. Well, now, Mary Lou, uh, not to put you on the spot, but uh, you've sort of seen the other side of it. The student who may get discouraged from time to time, it seems so hard to learn another language, especially when you start as an adult. Anything to suggest about uh, what could make that process easier well, for really people? Well, I really think you need to be really more focused mm -hmm. on, on what you're doing. And uh, I play those tapes in the car, you know, and I learned the songs really well. Yeah. I mean, I really like really that. I like the hymns and all that yes. sort of thing in Caddo. And, and I, if I could figure out some way to put the alphabet or something on tape, you know, or other words mm -hmm. and, and to a song, I think I could learn it a lot just better. That much easier I thought learn. about that song. Can I see? Well, I, th I think we're going to have to save the unfortunate talk okay. off for another <laughs> show. <laughs> I'm so glad you remembered it, but we're just about out of yeah. time, so we'll, maybe we'll have you on another time to sing about that yeah. Tonkawa that got beaten. Yeah. Uh, um, let me just thank you again, both of you, for being okay. here with us. We've really appreciated seeing your pottery and hearing your music and hearing about your language preservation efforts. We wish you the very best of luck with all of this. And uh, all we'll I can say, say is Teboa. thanks a lot, Teboa, yeah. and ha ha yeah. Sha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you for inviting us. Absolutely, you're very yeah. welcome. See you next time on the word path. Yeah. <laughs> Na hene yo hene, ana magwana kita, wa pene mada ole kita. Na hene yo hene, na hene yo hene, ana magwana kita, wa pene mada ole kita. Na hene yo hene.